On Thursday the 24th of July 2008, the Lambeth Conference returned to its original location, Lambeth Palace in London. Some 600 bishops began a procession at Whitehall in aid of the Millennium Development Goals. We asked them what they hoped this walk of faith would achieve, and also how they were personally finding their Indaba groups. The Indaba groups have been a good chance for us to sit together and talk about some issues with great honesty and again with a sense of amazement at how the context varies around the world. Um, as the issues are brought to the fore, there's a possibility that you may have heated debate, but I'm quite sure whatever is said will be done in love. Um, we're having some hearings, and also in the Indapolis as well, as you said. Well, I believe we'll address some of the more difficult issues this week, and uh, hopefully do it in a way that builds up the unity of our church and the passion of our mission together. I think our Indaba group is going very well. Uh, there's many differences of opinion, but we're listening to each other and there's a common uh, thread going through it of our fellowship and our respect for one another. I think as long as we continue that process, we'll do really well. There's great diversity in our group from Bangladesh to Los Angeles. And I think uh, even though we have differing opinions, uh, the leadership of the group, John Pedersen, is, uh, is doing a wonderful job. And the Bishop of Armagh is in there. So it's a good all-around group. Well, I'm very pleased that Jean is at least in the periphery. Jean is a longtime friend and a great uh, teacher. Jean has been employed all over the national and the international church to help establish new dioceses and do things like that. So it's only fitting that he be elected as Bishop of New Hampshire by the people that he served for 30 years. And I'm saddened that other people don't find that. But sexuality is something we can't change. Uh, I have uh, many good friends in Sudan. Uh, it was a little bit distressing, but I can understand because of uh, the cultural diversity we have that his address was painful for us to hear, but he wasn't recognizing who Gene is. If I could urge him to do any one thing in that address, I was at that news conference, and in that address uh, he suggested that he wouldn't need to talk to Gene Robinson until he repented. I think he should talk to Gene and then make a decision because in, in that relationship he will find in a very abundant human being who's an extremely devout Christian. About Gafcon? Oh, I've had conversations about the Anglican Communion and us loving and supporting one another. Uh, I don't think that uh, it's right to stay away from a table when there's an opportunity to talk to people. Uh, you'd never get anything settled by the isolation of your ideas. You need to share them and be open with one another. Um, some of the countries decided not to come. Some of us who were not expected to come still came because we have an opinion on matters that are being discussed and our chairs are there and an empty chair cannot express your opinion. Have you spoken to Gene Robinson? Have you seen him? I haven't yet. I understand he's somewhere in the neighborhood, but how, I have not. How do you feel about his presence here? Um, he has got his rights, so he may have felt that he needed to come. Mm -hmm. If you ask for my personal opinion, I think it's unfortunate because um, the scriptures that we propagate say that if the meat that you eat makes your brother to stumble, then you should avoid it for the sake of your brother. If he was not invited, in my opinion, I think he should have respected that and found another forum. Uh, I think what people really want to do, I'm sensing that people really want to dig in and have good conversations about uh, the issues, about really, uh, you know, a good conversation sounds a little weak because people really want to share what they really think with one another and to, to talk, challenge each other, but also to listen and try to, to, uh, to really start to make some headway on how we, uh, how we address these things together without simply walking away. And, uh, 
Yep, absolutely. It's begun to start happening. I think it started happening first in the Bible study groups because we've had such good groups and we've been enjoying getting together to do this. Um, and that has led into a, a sense of uh, a real safe and uh, of trust that allows us to, to speak honestly with one another. So I think it's starting to happen and uh, it's still early, but it's, it's happening already. So. We believe in, to, in hearing divergent views and positions and so forth. There, there is enough space for everybody. And love is about being able to embrace uh, different positions. For me, the bottom line is simply that we address the needs of God's people uh, who are caught up in a world of division and uh, hatred and poverty, and uh, we make this world a better place. Jude Robinson is, is around and uh, he's, uh, he's not part of the conference. Uh, the invitation was extended to him, or was not extended to him, so, um, so you're he's, he's not around. Well, he is, he's, he's not part of the conference, okay. but he is, he is uh, in England. Yes. Yeah. At Lambert. Well, he's visiting. No one, it's a free country. People can travel. I mean, there are a lot of people who are at Lambeth who are not invited, but they are there. What strategy are you going to be using to get across the Anglican mainstream position in your adult groups? Well, I'm going to be spending my time uh, pointing out that the truth is not subject to, to being uh, compassed. Uh, that the reality of John's Gospel is that John's Gospel is true. That's why we've been studying it. The Word became flesh and dwelled among us and we beheld His glory. Truth can never be reduced uh, to a matter of conversation that would uh, result in a new truth. God does not contradict Himself and God doesn't change His mind. And will you be talking about um, Revelation 1.10? I, I would certainly want the teaching of Lambeth, and the reason it's a good one is because it's biblical. Anything other than that would be uh, opinion. And when we enter into the realm of opinion, we uh, give a subjective element to it rather than an objective element to it. In other words, is truth objective or is it subjective?